Ever wonder if you can weld right over a fresh plasma cut? Have you already done it and are too afraid to ask what happened? Well, stick around, because today we're going to figure out why this doesn't work. Hey everyone, Bo Wigington here, and if you're anything like me, you might have thought about getting a plasma cutter to help speed up the cutting process in your shop. But plasma cutting raises some thorny questions, like how weldable are these freshly cut surfaces? Many beginners in the community have concerns about distortion with your material, impurities left in the cut, and then just how strong the actual edge is after plasma cutting. Today we're going to answer that question with the help of this Yes Welder CT2050. We're going to be using the plasma cutter with built-in air compressor to cut some parts out, then we're going to TIG and stick weld them back together with the same machine to see what happens when you weld over a fresh plasma cut, then how to actually prep your surfaces to get a good weld every time. Let's fire her up. We're set here on our cut with the compressor. Cut calm. That's saying that it's going to be using that internal air compressor. Cool thing about this machine is it's dual voltage so I can run it off 110 with a pigtail. The material I'm cutting right now is 4 inch flat stock and it's an eighth inch thick. This is at the higher range of what you want to cut with 110, but I just went slow and steady making sure I saw those sparks shooting out of the bottom. I'm also using a speed square as you can see here to make sure I have a nice square straight cut. All right, we got everything cut out. As you can see, we got nice little bit of dross here. Those edges are nice and gray. Tasty. Let's see what happens when we TIG weld and stick weld some pieces of this together. All right, so we're starting off with stick. I'm gonna be running a 332nd 7018 electrode, so I'm gonna be going right around 86 amps. Right away we could hear that we're having some problems and that's because we're plowing through all this dross. You could see it at the front of the puddle and it's just adding all kinds of contamination to our weld. I'm keeping a longer arc length because that's what's helping me burn through it all. But we're just chugging right along, plowing through it. Dirty. Switching over to TIG, we're running at 70 amps. You can see right away there's fireworks when we light up because all of that contamination. If you look to the right side, you see all of that dross that I'm burning. And I kind of have to do a, a backfill. I'm just cutting away and then filling it with the filler, just trying to dip it into that puddle. But the puddle does not want to go near that dross. That's not really what you want. Just as expected, that was gross. Check these out. This is what happened when we tried to TIG weld over all that dross. We got all kinds of contamination in these welds. They're not silver and pretty. They are gross and shitty. But these are not the type of welds you want to show your friends and family to show them that you are a welder. We didn't have much penetration on the back, but not really the most effective way of TIG welding, if you ask me. As far as stick, that one was, you know, it welded. It wasn't that much fun. As you could see, the arc was all over the place and it just was not a happy camper going through. We did get some kind of penetration on the back, but overall, not really the most effective way to do stick either. But it did weld, I guess. It's easy to see that didn't work out the way we were hoping. So what do we do to make it better? Well, you gotta clean it, fool. And it's not just knocking off all that dross. We gotta make sure all that oxidation is gone by using either a grinding wheel, a flap disc, something that we can take that off. Because believe me when I say, cleanliness counts when it comes to welding. It can make or break your joint, literally. Cleaning makes a world of difference. So let's see what it looks like to have a properly cleaned joint. This is the secret sauce we are looking for. See how we got nice clean metal. 
we got all of the oxidation off of not only the top and bottom but the side here and we got rid of all that nasty dross so let's butt them together and see how they do You can already see with that clean metal, this is a much smoother puddle. We don't have to plow through anything so I can keep that super tight arc length that you want with a 7018. Really, really happy compared to the first take, having that dirty metal. Time to give clean metal a try. We're still at 70 amps and as you can see, we just got a nice little puddle and we're just dabbing it in there. Dab. Adding our filler to the edge of the puddle. It's really easy to control this. Even with my shaky, shaky hands, I could get a consistent bead. Alright, so when we look at these two welds, we'll see a couple different things. The size of the weld was consistent over here because I had to weave. I was just plowing through that dross. It's so gnarly. There's all of this contamination that just built up on the top here. We burned it out, but it does not look good. Over here, this is our clean side. And sure, it's a little inconsistent, but that's because of me. But as you can see, the look of it is way, way more polished compared to this without touching it at all. When we switch over to the stick side, this is our dirty side and man, it did not have a good time going across here. I have a much flatter bead because I had to keep a longer arc length to plow through all of that dross I was hitting. And then at the end, I was just getting crazy and had a bunch of spatter. Now on the clean side here, we can see a much more consistent bead all the way across. We did have a little bit of blow at the end there. Don't know exactly why that's going on, but overall way happier weld. But that's what happens when you have clean metal and you got rid of all of that oxidation. <sighs> so refreshing to have clean metal. Stick, it was happy. You could tell when I was burning the rod, it was pretty consistent the whole way through. I'm not the greatest stick welder in the entire world, so the inconsistencies are on me. But overall, that's a solid bead. So now knowing everything we know, can you weld over a plasma cut? Yes. Should you? No. It's poor craftsmanship. Welding over a plasma cut makes your weld more brittle and prone to porosity. So is it really saving you any time if you're gonna have to go back and clean up all those cuts you just made? Maybe. Or maybe it'd just be easier to use a cutoff wheel or maybe a metal skill saw, something like that. All of these are things to take in consideration before planning your next project. But if you want to get a plasma cutter, I recommend it. It's a lot of fun. Until next time, we'll see you out there.